haven't even tapped into really every single thing that this ship can do. And once we do, and once we see everything that this ship has the capabilities of doing, it's going to be awesome. You know, I went through 22 months of training to come to the ship, and they gave me five NECs before I came. It's not just a future technology. It's real, and it's here. Now. You come here on day one, you're going to be given leadership opportunity and you're going to be given qualification opportunity. You're going to get a chance to drive one of the coolest ships out there. You know, a military jet ski with a flight deck and a gun. You know, who doesn't want to drive that around? For me, one of the most rewarding things about being on board an LCS ship is that I think this is what we all, at some point, joined the Navy to do. When I joined the Navy, I didn't expect to be an officer who would sit around and drink coffee and oversee evolutions. I imagine I would be leading them and in charge of them and participating in them. Um, and it's not really until LCS that I've been able to experience that. It's especially challenging to do new things in a service that's as steep and traditional as the Navy is. I think that LCS is where the future of the Navy is headed, um, between more automation or maybe plug and play missions. Um, and empowering one sailor to do more than one job. I really think that we're headed in a new cool direction that can do a lot for the Navy and this country. Obviously the LCS program is built on the foundation of mission packages, uh, so being able to be flexible uh, to one of three different areas that they're currently building, uh, whether it be surface mission package to go out and uh, fight counter piracy ops or small boat swarms, uh, to the anti-submarine package, to the anti-mine package. Obviously, depending on what a theater commander wants from his LCS, they'll put that package on board and we'll go fight that fight. Everything we have is containerized. It means uh, the boats, the guns, and all the, of our support equipment uh, arrives in containers and modules that can be craned off and craned on. Uh, relatively easy. Uh, it's not hardwired into the ship systems. It's all plug and play. Obviously, when you come up into the bridge, the layout of the bridge, uh, like you say, is very Star Trekish. Uh, you know, you have a place for your helmsman, you have a place for uh, your your OD, and then uh, the captain's chair behind it. So, uh, definitely different from anything else you'll see on the fleet. With our propulsion plant, we uh, provide power to four water jets, which is a new form of propulsion for uh, a Navy warship. Our water jets are so powerful that when we're operating at full power, we can fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool in a matter of seconds with how much water we're pushing through. We all own this thing together. We're all stakeholders in LCS. 220 rounds a minute, uh, capacity of 120 rounds. Uh, each round uh, contains 2,400 uh, tungsten pellets. Each round can be uh, programmed, I believe, eight different ways. So instead of having different rounds for different types of fire, uh, the gun programs the round as it leaves. So as soon as you fire, you're programming every round. So you can have every round be a different type. When we are transiting at low speeds, we can use our diesel engines and get a little bit better fuel economy. Uh, if our mission changes and we need to get someplace quickly, we can kick on our gas turbines and run all four engines and reach speed of over 40 knots. We've all served in various locations and duty stations in the past of what we term as legacy Navy. Uh, so this is a different environment where we all come wearing three, four, five different hats uh, with many different functions, collateral duties, responsibilities on board the ship. It's, it's a pretty demanding job. Uh, you're constantly going, uh, in charge of a lot of things with very few people to, to accomplish it. I am an air traffic controller. I control the helicopters on board. I'm an ASTAC, which is an anti-submarine tactical air controller. Uh, so every time we have an organic or non-organic asset come, um, we will be the ones that are in control of that um, aircraft. Um, I also do global command and control maritime, which is an overarching uh, um, current operating picture of what's going on in the fleet. 
And I also do what's called uh, multi-tattle or track data coordination, um, which is just a situational awareness tool for us and other units that are around us to have some uh, battle space expansion. The automation and technology that, that the Navy's pushing forward uh, through this program, uh, they've basically taken that same watch team to get a ship underway, normal underway steaming, um, for basically four people to be able to do the job. LCS is uh, a whole new animal. This is a fantastic ship. The Navy's getting a bargain uh, in what we have here. And the most exciting thing, in my opinion, is the ability to do rapid technology insertion with the latest things. So I, I think it's very exciting. This is the way the Navy's going. This is long term, the future of the Navy. We're basically uh, working on the doctrine, the tactics, techniques, and procedures that are going to be the foundation for what will be the second largest class of ship, the LCS, when we finish the build out. I think the fleet should be real excited about what we're doing here. So that's so really big. I'm, I'm making history. <laughs>